Sales have plummeted, average purchase price is down 14%, yet the spring market in 2023 with regards to the Toronto real estate market continues to surprise nonetheless. This and much more with regards to the Toronto real estate market in today's video. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, this is Sam from Sibiri 6 Real Estate and Remax Realtron Realty Inc. As always, back with another video for you guys here today. In today's video, we're gonna go through yet another Toronto real estate market report. The Treb resale market report has come out for the month of March and there's a lot of major trends to discuss at the time of recording of this video it is April 6th so we're only six days into April let's take a look at the month that was and where are we really with regards to the Toronto real estate market in spring of 2023 as always if you're new to the channel welcome my name is Sam a Toronto real estate agent working with buyers and sellers across the GTA on this channel we like to discuss all things Toronto real estate market oriented and GTA real estate market oriented market stats, market reports, market facts, building reviews, pre-construction previews, area analysis, buyer advice, seller advice, and so much more. So if you find any of this content informative, you can find my contact information in the description box and on the screen as well. Enough of that. Let's get to the major trends right now that we're dealing with within the Toronto real estate market. Now, March of 2023 was a very interesting month within the GTA real estate market and the Toronto real estate market, particularly also because March of 2022 in its own right was a very interesting month as well. February of 2022 was really the peak, peak, peak month. However, for condos and some other sub communities, more generally speaking, March actually happened to be a peak month. Nonetheless, whether it was the peak month or the second most highest month, we know what type of month we're dealing with when we're taking a look at the month over month analysis for March of 2023. And this is not surprising at all. What is actually indeed surprising is the fact that the market is not down more. A lot of people projected and predicted that the market would be far more substantially down year over year. And although the market year over year, as we will see, is down a healthy and noticeable amount, it has by no means crashed like a lot of people predicted. Let's start with the major trends. First and foremost, purchase price across the GTA, the GTA real estate market, anywhere from Peel to Durham, from downtown Toronto to York region. And this is the purchase price across all property types. The average price for a property across all property types, across all areas in March of 2023 was $1,108,000. This represented a 14% decrease, 14.6% to be exact, decrease year over year. Because in March of 2022, this very average price was at $1,298,000. So we really see how hot the market was and that wasn't even the hottest point as I said on this metric the average sold price of February was actually much higher but before we get into more details let's look at it on a month over month perspective we just now looked at it on a year over year basis what about month over month comparing it to February of 2022 well on a month over month basis prices are up marginally take this with a grain of salt please because once again this is the most general category you can possibly have average prices across all property types across all areas nonetheless in February of 2023 this average price was at 1,095,000 so we see an increase of about 13,000 month over month so the reason prices are somewhat steady year over year as I said 15% drop is a noticeable drop but you should have seen people predicting 30 40% drops I mean in some ways average prices at their worst thus far since peak market have dropped 20 to 25 percent when we break it down by municipality certain areas have dropped by 30 percent nonetheless on this grand metric across all property types across all areas people thought even in this category we would see a year over year drop of 30 40 percent now i've always taken the more realistic approach i'm neither a real estate bull or a bear i assess the facts as they come out the numbers the stats month by month week by week quarter by quarter and the reason the prices have not plummeted to the degree a lot of people predicted and month over month they're somewhat stable if not up on an average basis is because inventory has not improved in this spring market. This is where the spring market continues to surprise because a lot of people anticipated in this spring market we would see continuing rate hikes by the Bank of Canada which hasn't happened thus far. Now it can happen on their next meeting which is April 12th. Once again keep in mind this is being recorded April 7th. People thought due to the continuing rate hikes inventory 
inventory would flood the market. Uh, a lot of people would have to be offloading their properties and buyers would swoop in and take advantage and prices would decline. Well, inventory has not exploded. If anything, demand has exploded far more than inventory has actually been able to suffice the demand. Because when we take a look at it, total new listings are down 44%. I mean, wrap your head around that. In spring of 2022, when prices were supremely high, there were 20,000 new listings. Right now, that's down 44%. In March of 2023, with regards to the Toronto real estate market, we were looking at only 11,000 new listings. So of course, prices haven't plummeted. Of course, the market hasn't crashed because the inventory is just simply so low and there is demand out there. Demand that was somewhat spurred on further by the fact that the Bank of Canada did not hike the rates as anticipated. Once again, to repeat myself. And furthermore, now in recent days and weeks, by the anticipation that five-year fixed and three-year fixed mortgages will be coming down. And this is not to say, by the way, that everything is going to shoot up now. That I don't want to get that point across. And I sometimes bother myself the fact that I have to repeat this all the time because I don't want people to leave this video with that wrong message. I don't believe prices are going to even reach the neighborhood of what we were looking at in peak market 2022 and Q4 of 2021 for a long time, at least not in most areas. Certain property types in certain areas is possible and it has actually happened in rare instances in terms of one sale there, one sale here as you know i always have my eyes on the market so i could look at it from a grand scheme perspective or i can look at it from a minute you know very microscopic perspective as well but how do listings look on a month over month basis right because we have to also look at it month over month as well well this is the good news that yes listings have somewhat improved on a month over month basis by a factor of about three thousand listings total new listings not active listings but total new listings in the month of february of 2023 were 8,367. Now, as I aforementionedly explained, we're looking at 11,184. So inventory has improved as expected in the spring market so far, but not improved as expected in terms of amount. It has just improved and marginally so. 3,000 is nothing to, you know, get crazy about, but it has not improved to the degree a lot of people anticipated in improving. I guess it is seasonal in a sense, and hopefully inventory continues to improve for buyers. Hopefully, unfortunately, I have to say this, for a lot of sellers, inventory does not improve because we would not be getting a lot of prices we're getting now. And I'm speaking as someone who has sold two properties in the last two weeks at very good prices. And the prices I was able to get for my client, one uh, was a one plus one condo in Bayview Village. We sold it for a very good price and we wouldn't be able to sell it at that price if there was more inventory on the market. I could guarantee you that. And particularly so, another unit I sold, a Young and Steels, a two bedroom, plus one then with two washrooms where we sold it for far higher than market comps justified. I'll take a little bit of the credit for that, but frankly speaking, it was just a low inventory that really assisted us. Let's move on to sales. Sales are down 36%. Now, of course, part of this is the fact that inventory is very low, right? So the less properties, the less product you have available for sale, the less sales there will be, right? And also part of it is due to the fact that it's a cooler market relative to last year. There's no denying that. Last Last year, there were multiple offers galore that multiple offers and bidding wars have returned, particularly in the York region and Toronto East areas. Other areas, they have returned, but to a less of a degree. And this is not to say that they're actually pushing prices up. It's just that they have returned as a strategy and they're successful, but they're not really reflected in the prices, at least not as of yet. Maybe in certain municipalities of York region and certain pockets of Toronto East, but not on a large scale level. So once again, this is to say the success rate has improved, but the success rate has improved to the degree that they're going to sell at bidding what they would have sold at otherwise if they were not attempting a bidding war. Nonetheless, 36% drop in sales year over year, where last year in March of 2023, we were looking at 10,800 sales. Now we're looking at 6,000 sales, 6,896 with regards to the Toronto real estate market in 2023, March of 2023. But have we connected dots? Because we just talked about inventory figures and sales figures. 
once we connect the dots and try to derive a sales to listing ratio, we actually see that the sales to listing ratio has increased. That's right, we have seen an increase of 8% with regards to the sales to listing ratio. Now this is only the sales to new listing ratio and not sales to active listing ratio. So in other words, put more properties are selling relative to the amount of inventory on the market, although inventory has gone down by 44% as opposed to last year, obviously, where inventory was higher by a factor of 44%, so was sales, but relative to the amount of inventory on the market, in terms of new listings, the ratio was lower. So in coming videos, I'm gonna have more particular stats with regards to property types in different areas, uh, how the prices have held up. This was for the major trends, but going forward, how should buyers and sellers proceed in today's market? Well, I was telling sellers for a long time not to list unless they absolutely had to in Q3 and Q4 of 2022. I didn't really say list in Q1 of 2023, but those who decided to list with me and obviously list with other people have made the right decision thus far because they're getting much more bang for their buck as opposed to if they had listed in Q3 and Q4 of 2022. There is absolutely no denying that. I don't care how bearish you are on the market. You cannot deny the fact that the market market is up from Q3 and Q4 of 2022. Nonetheless, though, if you are a seller, I'm still hesitant in terms of saying you have to list right now. In my opinion, right, I think most sellers would be better off waiting until 2025, 2026. But if you have to sell, it's actually a far better time to go on to the market. This market is not a market where you can just test the market. You have to be serious about selling. You have to do your due diligence and you have to employ the right strategy because the bidding war success rate is working to a higher degree as I aforementioned, but it's failing for particular property types. Let me give you an example. Bidding wars right now are failing miserably for 1.3 to 1.2 to $1.4 million condominiums. The more straightforward approach is working better for that. As opposed to condominiums in the 600 to $700,000 range, bidding wars are working beautifully for those. With regards to detached and semis, well, bidding wars are working wonderfully for the middleweight properties. Once again, with regards to detached and semis, not so much town townhomes, I'm not saying there isn't a townhome out there that has multiple offers and that has received many offers due to a bidding war. Obviously that exists, but I'm talking on a grand scale. Right now, what's seeing the most demand in terms of multiple offers are the detached properties. As I said, namely, once again, in central York region and parts of Toronto East. And with regards to how buyers should approach this market, it depends if you're an investor or if you are a end user. If you're an investor, of course, timing the market is much more paramount. But if you're an end user and you're buying for your own purposes, of course, you should always do your due diligence with a professional, see what the comps are, offer something reasonable, try to get a good deal within reason, but you should not try to time the market. Right now, if you are a buyer, end user, investor, does not matter, you are dealing with a more competitive market. There's no question about that. So as a result, right now, pre-approvals and the ability to go firm is much more important as opposed to Q3 and Q4, where I really got a lot of great deals from my buyers, absolutely firm deals up to even 10 business days where we really dragged the sellers across the coal. I hate to use such a you know violent analogy, I apologize, because there was no competition competition was simply very low we were the only buyer or maybe the only serious buyer and we managed to use our leverage right now that leverage is far less that doesn't mean you still can't get a good deal but you have to practice your patience for sure do not rush into any deal do your due diligence look at the comps and don't try to time the market as i said but get something within a reasonable price for investors, I'm more keen to say wait until the summer months. I think summer months, you stand a better chance of dealing with less competition. Anyways, as always, this is Sam from Siberia 6 Real Estate and Remax Real Realty. Thank you very much so for watching. Stay safe and let me know your questions in the comments.